All right, guys, we are back. This is the Dream is Free podcast with myself, Jake Healy, and our, our super producer and host, Mike Theophil. Hey, guys. Our guest today is... Our guest today is Danny Vieira. He is the founder of Live Free, which is an organization, nonprofit organization that uh, helps families with children who are going through cancer treatment. And their overall goal is to provide a break from the from the treatment or after the treatment. Just as just as a reminder that the kids can can still have fun, family can still get together and do stuff. Um, so they they provide different experiences for families and children who are going through that, that cancer treatment. He is an overall just ins- inspirational and um, an amazing person. So we're, we're very excited to have him on today. Yes, sir. Um, I know him from, from Harborview Market, and we, we get into some deep conversations sometimes, like just sitting, having breakfast the other day, Monday, uh, when I went, to, um, I went to Harborview in the morning. I was like, I was burnt out Monday morning and I was like, and it ended up being a great day because I ran into you randomly there, sat down. We got into a really, really deep conversation about everything, spirituality, um, life, purpose, you know, and I think that's kind of like what this podcast is going to be about, you know, a um, couple things happened that day. You told me to go and watch the well, you didn't tell me to go and watch it. You said it, it did a lot for you was watching the, the Steve's Jobs. Steve Jobs' uh, commencement speech at Stanford. Yeah, he sent me that. I, sent I it watched to him. it. Pretty deep, right? Yeah, I was. I was like, I was actually editing a lot of footage, and it wasn't original content. So when you edit for other people, it's you know you're working. You know what I mean? And it's not as fun. And you're like, damn. And then he he sends me this. I'm in the grind, like hours in here, like <laughs> being crazy. And he sends me this, and it was just exactly what I needed. So thank you. Yeah, that and then he was like, you, you ever read The Alchemist? And like I remember reading Dude, The Alchemist. My favorite book. I, <laughs> Keep going. Sorry. I remember we just re- became best friends. Yes, yeah. we did in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember reading The Alchemist, like I think back in middle school, right? They make you read it, or high school that like they assign it to you to read. So like you kind of just I just read it to for the cliff notes and then went into class and pretended I knew what I was talking yeah. about, you know? <laughs> I wish I actually intently read it because I started listening to it on Monday. I got through the whole part one of it. I'm into part two right now. I love that book. But no, I mean, it's, it's an incredible book. Story. Omens, Divine I, Destiny. There's so many gems. It's, I wrote, it's insane. I wrote it's a, insane. A quote down from uh, from it that like I was listening. I was like, that's gold right there. So I wrote, I wrote this down to kind of start it off before you jump into your story. And when each day is the same as the next, it's because people fail to recognize the good things that happen in their lives every day that the sun rises. Seriously. You know? and it's incredible yeah <laughs> sorry it was just so beautiful <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um no so i mean we we wanted you to come on here and you have, i mean you have an amazing story and your, your organization is great so we just kind of want to hear the the story and they found ha- found purpose in something that could otherwise have been looked at as as one of the worst things to ever happen to, to somebody in their life yeah uh let's talk about purpose real quick sure Purpose is a little taboo to talk about because yeah. some people don't get it and then others, they don't necessarily find it or know what their purpose is. So when you find it, they kind of like, you know, pull back a little bit and they kind of look makes, at you. It like, makes yeah, you uncomfortable. Yeah, side eye. I think it makes them uncomfortable, but I think that it's important to talk about purpose because we all have one. Um, I agree with that. Yeah, I mean... All right, I'll dive into the story and I'll explain purpose because purpose is kind of what it's about. So in uh, February of 2015, my daughter was bruising a lot and it was really odd, like bruising in weird spots. So we brought her to the doctor and um, I'll go through the quick version. The quick version is we brought her to the doctor and the doctor was like, hey, you need to go get blood work done right now. So I took her, uh, dropped my wife Katrina off 
at, back at work and I took her to go get blood work. Didn't think it was a big deal. Blood work was done. The nurse is looking in the microscope and she starts shaking. Right. And I'm like, Oh, this isn't good. And, um, in a prior life, I served in the Marine. So I'm kind of like situational awareness. I kind of know what's Jake going on. Jake knows every former Marine and military guy. I swear to God. It's <laughs> funny. Yeah. Everybody Jake talks to, it's like, yeah, former Marine. Former Marine. Like, yeah. Jesus. Everybody, yeah. So uh, situational awareness. I'm kind of looking at what's going on and trying to, you know, analyze the situation. And uh, she, she starts to dial my pediatrician and she's shaking and, you know, while she's doing it, I'm like, okay, this is really isn't good. So a uh, pediatrician gets on the phone. Hey, I need you to go to Yale. We got to do some more testing. I'm going to go straight there. I'm, I'm already calling them. They're, the room's going to be ready for you. You're gonna go. Was she shaking because she was the woman? So was she shaking because she thought she had to tell you all this right now or because she was just. So I asked sad. her. So as she gave me the paperwork and she was shaking, I, I looked her in the eye. I was like, I know you can't tell me what you saw, but can you give me something. And she says, I just want you to know miracles happen every day. Wow. And I was like, all right, this really isn't good. So I get my daughter, we go in the car and the first person I call is my, was my mom and dad. And I said, look, I have to go to Yale with my daughter. I need you to pick up my son from school. He was in daycare at the time. I need you to take care of him today. I was like, I don't know what's going on, but it's, it's definitely not good. I'm going to pick up Katrina from work and we're going to go. So I call Katrina. Hey, not a big deal. We got to go to the hospital. Cause I didn't want to, you know, freak her out, you know? So I pick her she up. She was definitely freaking yeah. out. She was definitely. Oh, well, well, she wasn't. She would have. <laughs> okay. For sure. She didn't know. Were, were you freaking out at this point? Were you, or since you, you know, you've been in, you've been trained to stay calm kind of, or. Yeah. It's just task at hand. Yeah. Like pick her up, go to the hospital. Let's figure, figure out what's out. going on. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Yeah. My training definitely helped with that. We'll talk about that. The, the dots connect, right? Yeah. Right. So um, pick her up. We go to the, we go to the hospital. They're trying to draw blood from her. They can't draw blood. Like her blood is clotting as soon as they're trying to like poke the needle. And she's 16 months old. She's a baby, right? Baby, baby. So um, finally, after hours, they drew blood. An oncologist walked in. He's like, you know, my name is Dr. Ali. Um, I just wanted to let you know the blood results came back. Um, 99% chance that it's cancer and 1% chance that it's just a rare virus. And I'm like, okay, it's a virus. You know, like kids don't get, can- one, kids yeah. don't get cancer. Yeah. Like you see it on TV, but kids don't really get cancer, right? Uh, especially my daughter. My daughter's not going to get it. So um, sure enough, the next day, um, they brought us up to the room in the pediatric ward. Doctor came in. Okay, it's leukemia. But um, if there was a silver lining in this, it's the best form of cancer and probably the best prognosis. She has about 90% chance of coming out of it. So it's good. But you're still scared. I mean, it's cancer. You don't know, right? So uh, as the days go on, Actually, the next day, we were scared, man. We were scared. It was scary. You know, you see all these kids on the floor. Um, I had never seen a cancer kid before. Never. You know, so then you're seeing them, and, and it's scary. And um, there was a moment that I had. I was sitting on the couch. It was a green couch. And, and I, I'll never forget this moment because it was so profound in my life. It was You could smell the, the, the linoleum, you know, and, and that hospital smell. Mm-hmm. So I'm sitting on this couch, and it's just – my daughter's in like this cage. You got, you got to imagine it's like a crib slash cage so they don't fall out in the hospital. I don't know if you've ever seen like a pediatric like room. It's literally like a cage, right? And the sides come down. Like, mm. it's, it's crazy. And I'm looking over at her and I just, I put my, my face on a pillow and I screamed. My father was sitting you know, across from me and he just looks at me and he was just letting me have my moment. And um, I'm screaming because I'm just thinking like, I, I can't lose my daughter. I don't even know her. You know, she's 16 months old. Right. Like, mm. And, um, so I take the pillow off and I'm wiping my tears and I look over at her and she's just, she's got her little green pacifier in her mouth and she's just laughing at me and she's pressing this button for like this little toy that just sings songs. And she's just looking at me smiling and just pressing this button. And that was the paradigm shift for me. I, I'd had my moment. I needed my moment. I had it. And now I said, okay, this is going to be okay. We're going to get through it. This is not, and it, the moment that I had, I think, was this isn't me going through cancer. This is her journey, and I have a role in it. And uh, the role is that I have to make sure that she's doing that she's doing well, right? And the protocol is being taken care of, and I have to protect her. And I also have to protect my wife from the outside things so she can be the mom. I have to be the dad. Like, that's my role. So that was, that was the diagnosis, man. Um, 
lot of, that was a lot of, that was a crazy time. It was, you know, doctors coming in and out all, all hours. We weren't getting any sleep. We actually kicked a poor nurse out. I feel so bad for her. name was Jody. I feel so bad for her. <laughs> Jody. We, kicked her. we kicked Jody out. We're like, look, we just need some time. Like, why are you in here right now? We didn't get any sleep. Our kid has cancer. We don't even know what they're talking about. They're saying all these words that we have no idea what they mean. So yeah, that was that. Uh, a lot of surgeries, a lot of blood transfusions, a lot of chemo right away. Right away, it was instant. It was like the whirlwind, man. And I don't know if you could call it the first part, but I have a son at home too, and he's right. only two years old. Right? <laughs> yeah. So he's being shipped off between, you know, grandparents Family. and aunts and uncles and cousins. Friends. And, yeah, friend, like whoever will take him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I, I does not say don't and, need to sound and, like And that. it's not easy, but he's only two and a half. So he's still in diapers. He's, you know, it's not, not an easy task. So, um, Came home. We were quarantined for about three months. Um, only places we went were, you know, the grocery market. And when we did that, it's kind of like when COVID hit. It was like you're nervous, you're scared to go out. You don't want to get the germs. You don't want to bring it home to your daughter. You know, because her immune system, her immune system down. was down zero, zero, mm. zero, zero. A common cold could have done some real damage to her if not killed her. So you were ready for this this lockdown? Yeah. Oh, this lockdown was easy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this lockdown was easy. It's like I've been there before. Yeah, I mean, we would go to if we need to go to the store, we'd go to Stop and Shop. Um, buy our groceries, get undressed in the garage, completely undressed. We had hand sanitizing stations all over throughout our house. And, you know, we just did our thing. We'd hop right in the shower, groceries would stay in the garage for a little while. Same thing with COVID. I mean. Yeah. So, um, but we would, we'd have weekly uh, visits at the clinic. We would go to Yale and New Haven and uh, there's a clinic in Trumbull that we would go to. And um, I just saw more and more families that were going through it. It was like, mm. man, I didn't know kids got cancer and I definitely didn't know that kids got cancer this much because like, you know there's this many kids going through it right i mean there's every time we went we met a new family and uh, and you become close i mean as much as family loves you and they want to be supportive if they're if you're not going through it was it was it it's weird to say but was it comforting to like yes see other people going through yeah. it and like oh yeah oh yeah yeah that's actually a big role that i play with love free um that that's not talked about it's you know understanding what the parents are going through and We'll get into that too. Um, I'm, I'm giving you the long version, but no, it's important. Us, it, no, it's, it's fine. Version. We yeah, have plenty it's, of time. We don't have to go anywhere. All right, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We like this is. I literally, you guys leave and I stay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Cool. So, um, started seeing that we we're doing it. Uh, we'd start a GoFundMe to help cover some of the expenses because we had no idea what we were doing. Um, we didn't know what it was going to cost. We didn't know, you know, what work was going to look like. My wife had just started a brand new job, literally. Talking about dots connecting, she had just started a job in January, right? They let her come in right before Christmas to like start her paperwork. So technically, her employment started in in December, right? Even though it was like literally right before Christmas, she didn't do any work. She just filled out paperwork. She started work in January at this new job, K Force. I'll give them a shout out because they're incredible. Mm -hmm. um, insurance because they let her come in early. Insurance kicked in February one. She was diagnosed February ten. It's crazy. And if she had started, in, wow, had no insurance. Crazy. Yeah. That's yeah, so it's cool. Nuts. It's nuts. So um GoFundMe raised a ton of money. I mean, twenty five thousand dollars I think was raised for us, which was incredible. We needed every, you know, mm -hmm. in retrospect, we needed every dollar of it. Um I it essentially stopped working. I was working with my father, so it was a little bit, you know, more flexible. And she was just in and out of work. And they, again, they were great. They were like, Don't worry about it, we'll pay you, you know, just do what you can. Don't worry about it. So, good. so we didn't worry about it. Yeah. Um I have a client, uh, sports center in Shelton. Uh, you guys ever been there? Yep. Is that the sports complex? Yeah. Place? Mini golf. Yeah, oh, golf, cool. I love mini. that place. Yeah. 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 So, so it's like, um, my father has a client there. Uh, my father owns a, a landscaping company. So he maintains that property. Nice. And the owner found out Howard Safan. He's actually building the amphitheater here. Uh, Howard Safan heard out, heard about my daughter. He's like, I want to do something for you. I want to do a fundraiser for you guys. So, uh, he teamed up. Uh, we brought in Jay from Michaelizzi's. I don't know if you know Michaelizzi's. Yeah. Michaelizzi's. Uh, uh, Jay nice. Piccarello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so Fire. Jay Piccarello is like family now. He, he came up to my father and said, like, hey, we want to do a fundraiser. So we kind of combined forces. Uh, it was Michaelizzi's. And um, he, he kind of organized his army of people. The sports center shut down for a few hours. And everybody that came to the sports center for that day. So they, they, that's dope. Yeah, they played like it was a flat fee for people to come in. And the money came directly to us. Mm -hmm. But I felt guilty. Because we just had to go fund me. We raised twenty five thousand dollars. It's not a good look to double dip. You know what I mean? Like maybe in retrospect we could have used it. Um, but I just felt like we needed to do more. I have all these kids that I'm meeting here that that are going through it like us. Maybe they don't have that support system. You know, here I have I have 
hundreds, if not thousands of strangers that I, I've never even met that are donating to our cause and, you know, to help out, in, you know, our struggle, our personal struggle. While in the hospital, there was this young woman named Irene. She was uh, 19 or 20. I think she was 20 at the time. And um, she was one that really inspired me. Um, while we were in the hospital the first 10 days, I saw this young woman learning how to rewalk again. She was an above the knee amputee. She lost her leg to cancer. She had been in the hospital for over 365 straight days. It was incredible. And as I started, she was the first like pediatric cancer patient that I spoke to other than my, like, my daughter. And uh, as I started learning about her, I found out that she had a kid at home. Wow. Right. And then at this event at the sports center and things just aligned. Right. I mean, the dots just connected. Um, if I'm if I'm not telling this story, because it makes sense in my head. Like, if you have no, questions, it makes like, sense. To us, yeah. okay, it good. does. <laughs> right. um, Irene had got discharged from the hospital at the same time. And I knew it was like right on the same time. So I invited her there. And what we did was we took some of the money that we raised from that event and we gave her her and her son packages to um, the Chelsea Piers and, and Stratford or um, Stanford, because that's where she's from. So we did like, um, we did movies, we did, you know, swimming lessons for her son, we did as much as we can entertainment wise, so she can just get some quality time with her son. And it felt incredible. You know, we, we did this big presentation at the sports center uh, to her. And it was like, that was the start of something, you know, pretty incredible. So that was 2015. That was, was that what sparked Live free. Yeah. So, so about a year later, I mean, we're still going, we're in the thick of it with my daughter, you know? Um, so about a year later, I was, I just had an epiphany. I talked to this woman, Barb, and I was like, I want to start a nonprofit. And, um, I was like, I, I got Barb. Uh, just, Barb is one of the, one that, of, uh, always a great Barb. There's know? always a good Barb. Barb <laughs> yeah. is an incredible person. She's, yeah. she's actually a sacred heart, um, person. Cool. Um, cool. She, she runs a lot of the alumni stuff. Nice. And, um, she was involved in the first fundraiser. Jay, okay. Jay from Michaelizzi's brought her in. Got so it. I told Barbara, I was like, I want to start a nonprofit. She's like, do it. And I was like, well, that's, that's easy. Like an easy button. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So we started taking some of the money that we raised from that event and we just started giving like small packages. We started off with like the Bronx zoo, the Bearsley zoo, mystic aquarium, the, um, you know, things like that movie theaters. We just started giving tickets away to the, to the families as we'd see them. And um, Barb introduced me to a, a man named Aldo Guido. And if you don't know Aldo Guido, you should. He runs Al's Angels. Saga also, Talk Sweets. Saga Talk Sweets. <laughs> Shout out to Al. That's right across from, from the new. Uh, yeah, from uh, where that Sacred Heart Theater yeah. is going to be. Yeah. Um, by the Green, also in Westport on uh, and Saga Talk. On Saga Talk, yeah. Yeah. Great man. Great man. So I, I got a chance to meet Al. He really just inspired me. He's um, definitely top mentor that I have right now in my life. Um. Just kind of guiding me in the right direction, man. And then uh, we just it just kind of just took a life of its own. Um, what did you bring? You brought the plan to him, like your your idea, and yeah, I'll never forget. I was I was working out at the gym, and I just stopped. I was on the treadmill. I stopped, and I was like, I'm gonna write this man an email right now. And I just went to town, and I just wrote him like the best email ever. I actually have it framed. <laughs> 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 I, I don't have it framed, but I, I have it saved for sure. Yeah. I should get it framed because you know it's it's Change. the beginning. Yeah, yeah the beginning no, for the, sure, beginning of the story. So. Keep going, though. Uh, this is awesome. <laughs> so um, I don't know. A lot happened. My daughter was still going through treatment. So leukemia treatment is about two and a half years for girls. So it, it took a long time. She was still going through treatment. So live free. You know, we were doing what we were doing, um, but it just wasn't like big. It wasn't. You know, it was, it, and it still is. You know, grassroots, mom and pop. You know, just we'd get tickets to this. Hey, do you guys want to go here? Do you know a family that want to go? You know. Here and there, there, whatever. So it was pretty cool. Um, in our first year, I think we helped like 30 families, which is pretty good considering. I don't know that exact number. But currently, we're up to over 200. Oh, wow. Nice. Dude. Yeah. So uh, so that's what we went with. We just said, you know what? If if this woman, Irene, and, and I call her a woman, but she's she was still a kid going through cancer. She's, you know, 19, 20. It's still a kid. Now that I'm in my 30s, I think it's still a kid. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. But if she needed the family time and we needed the family time, that meant everyone needs the family time, right? We're all in. The, we talked about this the other day about people figuring it out. People think they got to figure it out, but we're all going through the same stuff, man. Nobody you know? has it figured out. Nobody has it figured out. I don't <laughs> care who you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, we just decided that that was going to be our focus. We were going to focus on, you know, providing family time and just good time for, for the family. Just take a break. And uh, it meant the world to families. And I didn't realize how much it was going to mean. Right. I'm being really honest. I just thought it was like, hey, you know, we just need some time away. But no, it meant the world to a lot of these families. Yeah. yeah. So you've helped over 200 families. What's, uh, tell us about the, 
uh, the success stories? Like, what's what are like the huh. the major like you know? I, I think you told me about you. You were able to send send a little girl to see her dad, who was in the. Oh, there's so many good ones, man. There's so many good <laughs> that stories. was a couple of them. Um, if my favorite one, and you and you'll appreciate this because you're a basketball fan. Mm-hmm. So I walk in to uh, we, we're delivering Italian ice, right? Because Michael Lizzie's now is involved with us. Nice. So we're delivering Italian ice to the hospital, and we walk into this young man's room. Um, looked to be about 16, if I was guessing at the time. Um. His name is Austin. I walked into to Austin's room to deliver Italian ice, and the first thing I saw was his brand new Kyrie Irving sneakers. Mm. And I said, "Okay, <laughs> Kyrie, Kyrie just got traded to Boston." Mm-hmm. So uh, we kind of just hit it off. This kid had a vibe, man. This kid had a vibe. He, he just a good kid. And um, so we left. I left. I told him what you know what Liffrey did. But usually when they're in the hospital, it means that they're not in real great shape to be able to go to an event. You know, so I have to be cognizant of that. But um, I just went home and something was telling me, like, just email the Celtics. Right. So I go home and I cold email the the Boston Celtics like, hey, my name is Dan. I run this organization. Here's my website. So, you know, that I'm real. And uh, I got a kid that wants to go to practice. And he didn't want to go to practice. I I wasn't even sure that he liked the Boston Reds or the Boston Celtics. (laughs) You know, I was like, (laughs) but but I knew as you know, as a basketball fan, I knew that practice is where you want to go. Yeah. So I so. um Man, within like eight hours, I got an email back from the Celtics. We'd love to do this. This is the practice that he can come to, and uh, and we'll do a game. And I was like, oh, this is incredible. So I called I called up the mom because I had the mom's number. I was like, I know you don't really know me that well, but I just want to let you know like, I got tickets for Austin to go and you guys to go to a Celtics practice. And game. And game. And he was like, I was like, do you mind if I call Austin and tell him? And he was like, sure. She gave me his number, and I called him. He was ecstatic. The kid got to go. Um, the kid got to go, and he got to meet all of them. And you're a basketball guy, so you'll remember this. Do you remember when um, Kyrie Irving and I think it was Jason Tatum went heads up one on one in practice? They talked about this. Mm-hmm. That was the practice he got to go to, where they went heads up one on one. What? Yes, dude. That yes. is insane. Insane because you, you, practices don't usually make ESPN. <laughs> This did. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think it was Jason Tatum. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yes. They played one on one at practice. And they and that's funny because it, it turns out like that the reason why Kyrie left is because, you know, he had bad blood with those young pups. Right. You know, he just didn't get along with them. So that one on one was probably a fight. Yeah. Like literally a scrap and claw game. So right. That's epic, dude. Was uh Austin psyched though to meet Kyrie? Oh my goodness. He got to meet him too. That's awesome. He got to meet him. He got to um he got to meet all of them. I'll, I'll awesome. actually send you a video. I'll yeah, send yeah. you a video of it because uh, Austin actually made a video for us. Oh right? wow! Uh, like a testimonial. Yeah. Oh, that's so, awesome. So Austin was able to do that, and you know, it was it was um, it was really incredible. And and I hate leading with that story because uh, you know Austin pa- ended up passing away from his yeah. cancer. Um, but I'll tell you what, man, it meant the world to him. Um, you said you said the Celtics also wrote to the family yeah. So after. when Austin when I, when Austin passed away, I, I felt compelled to, to let you know the woman that had helped us know. And um, his uh, his funeral arrangements were the next day, and Boston sent him flowers and uh, like a really nice note. Yeah, it was uh, really See, shout out shout out to Boston. Celtics. Yeah, and I was just gonna say that is the I'm a Knicks fan, and that is the difference between the yeah. Knicks and the Celtics <laughs> well, that's not right the here. But. No, I mean there's many, but it's just yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, sure. Like the Knicks would never do something like that because they're trash. It's funny, like Dan- Danny said, like the Boston sports teams are the nicest like organizations ever like they love doing stuff for people yeah and he said the new york teams don't even get back to you yeah i figured yeah. I'm, not, I'm not gonna name them just in case i have a relationship with them <laughs> in the future yeah <laughs> but there's a couple that didn't even respond no or they responded like no thanks um but the, Bo- the boston ones all of them uh the penguins the, the red Sox. the red Sox were incredible there's a yeah. few they use on field access for bp um, they thought that oh, that's weather, dope. Yeah, they thought the weather weather wasn't good enough for the kids, so they brought them into a private box and fed them. Like, yeah, hell yeah, pretty pretty legit. Yeah, and Boston's good good for them too. Good. I mean, like doing stuff like that is gonna keep people like us talking about it for right years and years and years. Right. And yeah, years. I mean, they gained a fan of me too. I mean, I know. Guy, you know. Yeah, seriously, uh, you know, something like that makes you want to switch over. <laughs> <laughs> and they just went to trash too. I mean, I'm a Jets and Knicks fan. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, it's the worst. It's like I'm losing every year. Yeah, well, I don't. I'm not like a huge sports fan, but yeah. from now on, I'm saying I like the Celtics. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Patriots, the Boston Bruins. Like, I'm, I'm all about Boston. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yep. But one of the one of the things that really, you know, I tell Austin's story because um, it was really profound to me. It was like 
what you're doing is really important because it actually they talked about the the Boston trip in his obituary, um, which to me was like for I mean, for such a young person, it's like it, it was a big deal. Yeah, it was a big deal to him and mm -hmm. his and his family at a really important time in their life, right? So now it grew from oh, this is just mom and pop like having a you know they you know giving them tickets to this is a big deal. We're making an impact right. on people's lives and we're giving them lasting um, memories, memories that'll last forever, mm. right? Um, one of the latest stories is a young girl, Samira, she beat brain cancer. Unbelievable story. She's just an, an incredible, incredible young girl. She's young too. I think she's like nine or 10 now. Um, her father was actually in active duty in the army and he was stationed out in Kansas. And uh, they hadn't spent a Christmas together in like three or four years. Uh, he would waste, not waste, but he would use all his leave time to come like during the big surgeries. Mm. Um, so Samira's in a wheelchair. She's learning how to walk and talk again. Um, she's doing really well. But uh, we were able to send her out to Kansas to go see her dad for Christmas, which was like really. I love incredible. those videos. Yeah, man. Yeah, I always cry. All right, I'm gonna <laughs> honestly. I'll send you that one too. <laughs> yeah, they're like happy tears, though. You know what I mean? They yeah. are. Yeah, and that's sad. Same. I I cry often. Over yeah, this because it's um, there's special moments for these families. Right? Yeah, it's like like you said, like I'll never like I uh, I I don't know right now what what it feels like to be a parent one, and then two, ha be a parent, and my kid has cancer, and so it's like hard for me to understand, but I know how special. Like you're saying, those memories last forever. You know, even though uh, what was his name, the first kid, Austin. Austin, passed. Like they know he, like, like those memories, like were everything for him. Those last couple, whatever, right. big right. trips or whatever, and just to have another person outpouring love, you know what I mean, is a special thing. Like, right? Not well, yeah. I mean, you got you have to think like he's been going through cancer treatment, right? So their lives probably consisted of. Him not feeling good all the time, all the time, being in, mm. in and out of hospitals, not mm -hmm. not doing anything, right? So mm -hmm. for probably the last two years or however many years before he passed away, right. it's probably not great memories, right? Mm -hmm. That's exactly. So right. then you have that one glimmer of light that you're able to reflect back on before light. That's an important right? word. Yeah, absolutely. Light. It's an important word. But yes, you're you're absolutely right. They, um, you know, it's filled with doctors visits, chemo feeling bad and throwing up and not wanting to get out of bed. And then it's like, and what we're also starting to see, and I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to really you know, get into it. But um, I, for me, Might what help. I've seen is that it helps with the treatment. Like it, they're able to take it a little bit better, you know, and even if it's for that week, you know, they have something to look forward to mm. and they have, you know, or they had a good, such a good time that they're still, you know, on that, you know, they're feeling good. They had a good time with their family and it, it's just, it's a reset button just a lot. Um, I think it really affects. I'm not saying that it cures cancer because uh, <laughs> I'm not saying that, but I think, you know, the, no, the energy, for yeah, sure. yeah. The energy. Yes. For sure. I believe for sure, in that, sure, you know, in sure. mind, the mind is a powerful thing. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, man, let's live free, live free. We provide fun, fun experiences. We did, you know, Samira did that. Um, I had two young, young adults, um, really big into Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler was here in Bridgeport last June. Oh really? Uh, got oh, that. We're <laughs> at the at Harbor Yard Arena. Oh wow! I wish we knew, Jake. So I, know, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. So I'll never forget it. I'm I'm in Arizona. I go on a little spiritual trip for myself. Nice. And um, I had an epiphany. I was out there and I had an epiphany. I was like, wait, I know somebody that knows Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. I don't know, or um Kevin Nealon. Kevin Nealon's a really good friend of Adam Sandler. I mean, he was in all the movies. You know. Oh yeah. yeah he's like one. Like one of his boys. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 he's a comedian in his own right. He's yeah. pretty funny, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, he's on, he's on weeds. He was on. Uh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, big tall guy. Yeah. Um, he actually grew up in Bridgeport. Really? Yep. Kevin Nealon's from Bridgeport. I didn't know that either. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Bridgeport, Bridgeport, Connecticut. So. <laughs> shout out to <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll never forget. I they got one of those like share scooters out in out in Scottsdale. I'm on the scooter and I got my little ha iPods. I'm like, let me call Billy. Billy knows. Kevin, let me get Kevin on the phone. Get Kevin to let us meet Adam Sandler. So long shot. I'm talking about long shot. Guess what? Go to Harbor Yard. I get a phone call. Hey, we got backstage passes for those kids. You're gonna go backstage and meet Adam. So holy kids, shit. So these kids got to go backstage and, and meet Adam. You talk about down to earth guy. What yeah. Do to shout out to Adam. Really? Can Seriously. Can you drop the horns on Adam Sandler? Hell yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> no, he's. Uh, you could just tell that he's actually one of the good ones. Yeah, he's a good dude. Man. He's not on the. Yeah. He, he didn't go to Epstein Island. Let's put it that way. <laughs> he, he, he walked in a room and there was a bunch of people ready to meet him. You know, like family member, whatever. And he, I saw him see the girl. She had the bald head, and she's. He saw her, and he. He essentially like. Were you back there too? I was back there. Oh, I, right. I had to escort them. Um, I'm. I'm not into that kind of thing. It's just my jam but I, right. I was asked specifically make sure that these kids behave That's yeah <laughs> yeah you're <laughs> the is, parent yeah, which yeah. Is fine. um so he like he, he walks in the room and he scans the room and he sees them and he almost beelines for him he like shakes the other people's hands really quick and then he goes and actually spends time wow. with those kids and one one is like an aspiring um comedian so he told him the story i don't want to get too graphic no no i get it I mean, if you're okay with if it, you're okay with it, so we're kid, cool. We're so plus eighteen. Al- so this kid Alex is uh, he's twenty plus. Uh, he's like twenty two now, and he tells us he has a stand up routine where he talks about his diagnosis. And you know, he had just been told that he had cancer, and then the nurse comes in, is like, "Hey, we need a sperm sample." So he tells a story about how he's trying to, you know. Yeah, <laughs> produce his sperm sample right after his cancer diagnosis, right? Jesus, <laughs> it's hilarious. That's actually so, so yeah, poor, funny, so the, but it is fun. So, like, so, yeah, so, yeah. The, so the poor kid told this at a gala in front of like one of the most conservative priests of all time, <laughs> and it was it was like so brutal. But I go up to him, I'm like, dude, I you loved got, it. It would have to make a priest laugh too. I mean, no, no, no. no. People were horrified at this. It was just not the right. It was just not the right. Not thing. the right crowd. You got to learn your. Crowd. I was in the crowd, so it was definitely funny. <laughs> so I go to the guys, like, I know you don't know me, but this is. This is the funniest thing I've ever heard, and I need to get you on board with Live Free. So we did. But anyway, so he, he actually pitched this joke to, to Adam Sandler. He told like Adam Sandler home thing. So it meant the world to him. So That's like, awesome. Did Adam Sandler? Oh, he laughed. It was hysterical. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was actually a pretty funny story. Yeah, that is. Is, that, is he still pursuing stand-up? He is, yeah. He was um, He was actually at the golf tournament. Uh, you probably laughed. What was his um, name? His name was Alex. He, he came and he did the awards at the end. I think you had left before like the awards were done. Okay. Yeah, Alex was there. He's what's, his, what's his last name? Um, Lorenzana. Alex Lorenzana, and he's like he's trying, like pursuing stand up. He's he's pursuing stand up. I think he's pretty funny. All right, I yeah. ha- I like. I mean, that. It sounds like he'd be pretty yeah. Funny. I mean, when he talked about how he asked the nurse to come in and help him, like, how did he not, how did he not laugh? You know? yeah, yeah. yeah, that's funny. So before before everything happened, right before like live free, before your daughter getting diagnosed with cancer. Um, were you like we we were talking about purpose, right? Were you like actively thinking about like purpose? I was miserable in life. Were you? Yeah, I was miserable in life. Um, depressed. Um, I wasn't doing what I wanted to be doing. I le- uh, I went in submarines for five years. I went right after nine eleven. Nine eleven happened six months later. I joined the Marines. Left six months after that. So uh, September twenty third is when I left to go to boot camp in the Marines. Uh, four months after that, like we invaded Iraq. So it was like pretty legit times. I was lucky. I never deployed, uh, bothered me as a Marine for a long time. Mm. But then I realized like the dots connect. It wasn't <laughs> for me to go to war, man. It was for me to learn mental toughness, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so the dots connected uh, there. Uh, so Marine Corps, what'd you do after the Marine Corps? Marine Corps came out, didn't do anything. Live with mom and dad. <laughs> it was brutal. 23 years old living on, you know, living in my old bedroom. It was tough. Um, met my wife again. I, we, we grew up together oh nice um uh i was working with my father cutting grass like as a landscape so brutal like mm. it's cool because i did what i you know my dad's the boss do what i want yeah kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and um but i just was unhappy that was actually the first time i read the alchemist i was cutting grass and i just put my headphones on and just listened to the alchemist uh knew it was a lot of gems but didn't didn't get anything from it nothing i got nothing from it mm. um and from there, I, I got a job working on uh, nuclear subs up in Danbury, and I hated that. So my <laughs> wife and I decided to move to Arizona. Uh, got a job at Boeing. Was working on Apache helicopters because my trade in the Marine as a helicopter mechanic. Sick. Um, yeah, it was. It sounds cool. It's not, it does. It's not though. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not when you when it's not your purpose. Yeah, yeah. When you're just doing it, it's like turning wrenches. You're just showing up every day. Yeah, out, kind of just doing what you got to do. Yeah, man. There's a lot of people. I'm not going to go there. There's a lot of people that are unhappy in those kind of jobs. Those factory jobs are tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those factory jobs are tough. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, got pregnant with my son Armando. Panicked. Shout out Armando. Shout out to Armando. <laughs> <laughs> he's such a good kid. Young Armando's, goat. Armando's ripped, by the way. He's, yeah. How old is he? Uh, he's eight. He's eight. He's, he's got legit, like dude. six pack. Lifts weights all the time. Yeah. Well, COVID got him a little bit lazy, but COVID got, him. <laughs> got us all lazy too. Yeah. Um. So that's so funny. 
so came came back here because we panicked we had, we had a kid and um uh, got a job at sikorsky doing the same thing i was doing there just mm-hmm. a different helicopter and um hated it bad <laughs> it was bad man I, I really hated it and i was i was decent at it it wasn't like top mechanic but i was good at it and it was just it was brutal, man. Being no no windows, that was like the toughest part for me. There's no windows in the sure And yeah. you can't like, isn't it true? You can't like no phones and stuff. Or is yeah, that, is that yeah, a, no, yeah, no phones. Yeah, like, it's like what they like. If you want a break, you take a cigarette break, but you got to walk a mile to go cigarette break. Yeah, it's brutal. It's brutal. Yeah, for me, it's brutal. No, I, that sounds horrible. I, so I, have, too. I have a friend that works at. Uh, I'm not even gonna say which one he works at, right? But he he works on. A specific type of aircraft mm-hmm. right and he always sends me like secret pictures of stuff like he'll just be like, <laughs> be like I, I grabbed this one for you he sends me the picture like <laughs> like they were they were freezing uh helicopters um wherever he was working and they were freezing them to like negative 60 degrees and then like trying to see what works and doesn't work on it so he's oh, wow. like yeah testing yeah wow that's great i worked on donald trump's personal aircraft Wow! Yeah, every that's day, cool. That guy, he had he had composite so like fiberglass like exhaust covers, and he didn't like the fact that they were burnt, so he he made everyone do well. They made Sikorsky yeah redo them in like um, sheet metal, so they're nice and shiny. <laughs> Shout out to the Donald things that the things that rich Lago rich people done. worry about. It's like yeah. <laughs> so um, seriously, so then um, had my daughter, and I was like, I'm just over this factory thing. I went to go work with my dad, and I was just unhappy. I started trying to go to school. I knew I wanted to work. Uh, like help people so i went to school to uh, be a social worker that didn't work out i'm not a school guy either right. so i'm depressed man i'm like i, I know i want to help people i don't know how to help people but you were actively searching active you, yeah actively searching you were depressed but you knew that there was something there was something more for me right. and i didn't want to be caught up in the dogma of like get a nine to five um you know be a you know do the right thing from like 1980 right like, that's not the thing anymore it's 2020 yeah and um you know i had a, caused a lot of issues my parents were like you know what are you doing you have two kids you know yeah like you gotta yeah, work yeah. yeah and then live free i was i was still working with my father's you know running a crew and uh doing the live free stuff and it was like i would work less and less i take my own truck in and instead of taking like the the work truck i take my own work truck and follow the crew and then you know i'd go help them with a little bit for an hour and then i'd go do live free work for you know two hours and then i go home and take a nap because i was depressed and um <laughs> you know go back check up on them and then just do more live free stuff and um and then you know obviously i was going through doctor's treatments and chemo and all that stuff too yeah yeah, yeah. I, wonder, I wonder what it is like about about you that like I'm sure I'm sure people get like terrible news all the time and like it devastates them and they kind of just go through it and it doesn't really change anything for them or maybe it, it gives them a worse outlook on life like 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 a why me kind of thing you know and then like why somebody like you has has like the worst news ever delivered to them and like can turn it into this yeah so beautiful thing you know it's like so um I, I thought the same thing I don't think I've ever thought, why me? If if I did, it was that moment on the couch, on that green couch, right? Where right. I was like, why is this happening to me? But it wasn't happening to me. It's happening to your, to your It's dog, happening right? to her, and I had to support her. So why was I going through that? I had to question, but um, I don't think I did. I, I was just f- really focused on my job as a dad and, and, and that. Um, but then I started really asking questions like, what am I really doing here? Why am I doing it? And what am I doing in terms of like live free and helping people? And I started seeing a, um, by chance, I had a really good, uh, you know, somebody that I look up to. Um, I asked him what makes what he makes him successful. And he says, George, that was like the first, like, I couldn't even get it out. And uh, so it's like, what is George and how do I meet this guy? And he was like, well, George is uh, a spiritual advisor. And um, I think you should see him. So I went and I said, George, and it was life changing. It's life changing because then I understood why the why was because it was my purpose, it's my duty to to do this. It, it was duty. Eric Thomas, what's your why? What's your why? Yeah, this is my why. You have that on your website, actually. Yeah, our why. Yeah, our why. It says it on their website, like the story of your daughter and right. why you do what you do. Cool. I, I actually read the Simon Sinek book of uh, Start with Why. Start with why? That's a good one. If you haven't read it, that's a really good one. I haven't. I'm I haven't. Gonna, I, that's a really. I put good it one. on my 
my list honestly right Start now. Start with why? Yeah, Simon Sinek. He's really good. Oh, I love Simon Sinek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's cool. I watched. Oh, I've watched some of his videos. Yeah, yep. his first big book was Start never, with Why. He's good I've never too. heard of. It's a good book. Yeah, I'll check it out. I'm You'll gonna, like. Him. I'll take any book recommendation from you anytime. Oh, yeah. Right now. So Alchemist is yep. like on it. That's actually honestly my favorite book. I swear to God, the Alchemist. Yeah, mine too. I, so I've listened to it five times in the past year. Wow. Wow, it's, you could definitely listen to it. it's a four. It's a four hour. It's a four. It's yeah, easy, it's easy. I have it. I have the hard copy. Yeah. Right. You could, I like the the audible because you just put it on when you're driving. driving. Like you, just, you know, I right. find myself like um, I gotta leave work and take a break right now. I'm gonna go. <laughs> and and I, forget the name, I forget the name. Yeah. I forget the name of the person, but he's a famous actor that reads it. That's actually the um, the narrator. Can you just get this on YouTube? Where do you, where do you listen to it? audio books? Oh, audible, audible. Oh, okay. Yeah, like you gotta actually. Down, download by the app, all that stuff. Got it, got it. It's worth it. If yeah. you have Amazon Prime, it's free. I do. Yeah, it's free. cool. No, it's definitely Alchemist Man. What a book. Yeah, I want to get into. I want to get into it because it's your favorite book. Yeah, so, no, I just love the whole concept of divine destiny, omens, and pe- people don't know what omens are. They're just things in your life that you can't control that are that would come into your life to t- to tell you something, give you a sign, let you know, like, hey either go this way or don't go that way kind of a thing, which I, and I just, I just love that the shepherd boy and like the whole, his whole journey of, of becoming who he is supposed to be, you know, well, he is you and you are him. You are we San- are all him. You are. Yeah. San- yeah we are Santiago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Exactly. Yeah, sure. Exactly. Sure. The, the reason why I've read it so much is because there's so much content. There's so many gems and I'm learning in my age now is that we don't always hear things we're not prepared to hear things and and instances happen that change your perspective and things that happen to you that now you like understand. I, I, I can, mm-hmm. I, I, I compare yes. it to like school, right? So if you're in third grade and then you pick up like an eighth grade science book, you don't know what you're reading. Right. None of it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. But guess what? When you're in the eighth grade and you're reading it, it makes sense. Like mm-hmm. You have to go through those things in order to understand it. And I feel like that with the alchemist. So, so I, I mentioned that I'd read it one time. It's the first time and none of it made sense because I wasn't really on my spiritual journey. You no. have to be, like actively be looking, right, right, and, for if, you, that and information. if you if you start from that, if you if you start on your on your purpose, and then you read the Alchemist, you'll get it. Mm. You'll you'll immediately you may not understand like chapter mm-hmm. two. Yes, yes, exactly. But you'll definitely understand the start and where Santiago was and when he had that dream and he was like, "Man, I got to follow my dream." Yep. You know what I mean? You'll get yes. that part. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, for me, I was in the crystal shop already, and yeah, and I'm, I'm I'm actually with the alchemist, and you know, I said I spirit, uh, see a spiritual advisor where I feel that I'm at in my journey, and I could be wrong, you know, something may happen where I'm like, well, I wasn't even there, I was actually way back, right? Um, Still with the but sheep. We're, yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Seriously, yeah. it for could sure. be for sure. Um, I feel right now that I'm, you know, when I with my spiritual advisor, that he's like the alchemist, and I'm learning, yeah, why I'm doing yeah. these things, and and learning meditation, which Santiago learns meditation yep. when he's in the desert. It's, Incredible stuff. Yeah. But anyways, um, meditating is key. I I am actually afraid of meditation. I don't do it yet. So that's why I'm there. I'm like trying to learn it. Download a <laughs> Headspace app. Okay. I'm gonna write that down. That's like when I like to start meditating. Like I I use Headspace app. It gives you you could do like the free trial. It gives you 30 days of guided sem like semi guided meditation. Like it's just like put it on and just follow the directions. Okay. Right. And then at a certain point, like you just really like you get into it and like, you could mm. just take those deep breaths into the nose, out through the mouth. Yep. Return the breathing back to normal, close your eyes and then just focus on the, the breath. William and- Hoff. Or is it, no, not William Hoff. I'm sorry. Um, Hoff, the ice Wim, man. Wim Hoff. Wim Hoff. Yeah. The ice man. The best. Have you looked in him? No. This, Dude. this is a guy. He just like goes and sits and like, <laughs> Antarctica, breathe. like freezing cold, must wa- breathe. Yeah, freezing cold waters, and just like meditates. Oh, like, he just goes into like space. can actually raise his uh, I'm, I'm body temperature. Bo- he can raise his body temperature by thinking. He's he's like healed himself too, um, just Crazy from breathing. Stuff, yeah, yeah. I'm really afraid of that that headspace. I'm terrified of it. Really? Yeah. I mean, think That's, about how think about how powerful you can become. I'm not a big fan <laughs> of power, man, because yeah. power can change people. You know what I mean? And I'm just like. I'm I think, not, seriously, I'm terrified of it. For me, I, th- I think if you do it right, it's supposed to make you feel right smaller. Yes. Okay. Because, yes. You know, I, I I haven't gotten there yet. Like some usually, like when I when I meditate, like I start out 
and it attacks ego it doesn't inflate ego for me at least. for real yeah like honestly the only egotistical part about it, telling other people that you meditate yeah <laughs> <laughs> for real. Like, honestly the only thing is like that's when how you, i feel about purpose right yeah, yeah. well i mean like it's a, it, it's in it's in line with the there's a, it's the good wolf if and the bad wolf you know what i mean people that like that you meditate because you're trying to seem like spiritual yeah and like on the spiritual pedestal like, like yeah, those, meditate. yeah you know what I mean? but if it's just like if you're having like a real conversation yes like, this is how, this is how i meditate this is like what i do and meditation I mean, for other people for there's different forms of meditation in my opinion too like some people meditate on word on you know music on uh, breathing for example but like for everyone it's a little different you know so if someone's saying they meditate well you know it could mean they're doing something different that right. just gets them in that spiritual place where they could recenter get back to this crazy world and feel like hey i'm good i'm recentered let's go back and tackle it you know yeah i mean it's all about like controlling controlling your own mind which is something like once you once you sit and meditate right you don't realize how often you don't ever just sit and be in your own Mm -hmm. like self you know what what are those thoughts who's whose thoughts are those what are you thinking why are you thinking so much? It's really like crazy when you yeah. f- when you really just sit there and you're like and you just try to focus on your breath. The stuff that pops into your head. It's crazy. That comes out, out of nowhere. And out of nowhere. It's all about letting the thoughts come and go. Yeah. Right. And being able to recenter and yes. fo- refocus on what you were trying trying to do. You, you guys know? believe in the power of thought and attraction. Oh, well, I'm a huge, right. huge affirmation guy. Every morning and night, words of affirmation like clockwork. Like clockwork. Can yeah, I tell him seriously. the Janowski story? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, I, for- I, for- I forgot about it too. Yeah. I was like, he's he, got to tell us this, this story about me- Dan Orlovsky. Yeah. That's all he said. <laughs> so it, I've it, been talking about you for weeks. Yes, yeah, he has been. Like, Yo, I'm so excited to have yeah, this guy actually, come on. You're here. on our wall too and uh, everything. Yeah. Like before we've- I even asked you to come on, I was like, I'm going to ask this guy to come on our podcast. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> I'm really glad we met. Yeah. I mean that. It's crazy. It's crazy. I was thinking about that too. Like how just the circumstances of oh, life so, but they're, like how every little tiny thing that we've gone through let led us to this moment right now and it's mm-hmm. like it's perfect i know <laughs> it is it is the, yeah. it's absolutely perfect yeah and um are you guys uh god is like kind of taboo with some people i'm gonna talk about no, god. Very, yeah we love god, god spirituality yeah and, like uh everything what an architect yes Yes. What an architect. No, yeah. Is. I mean, because he is just, he's not just building and and guiding my life. He's guiding yours and yours yeah. together yeah. with mine. Yeah, right. And brought yeah. us to this room right now. I know, I know. It's crazy. It, yeah. It's mind blowing. It actually it gives is. me a little anxiety to even try to think think about that. But yeah. I mean, you let go and let go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yep. But yeah, give us the. Give so, us well, the story. well, real quick, the power of the mind, I'm actually, I, I believe in it so much because it's so. That's another alchemist thing. That's it's yeah. It's such what is, what is the what's the guy's name? Me, Metra, mm. uh the old man, the king, the yeah. king of Sailor. yes. He oh, says, the crazy king. I yeah, love him. He says when you Mechelzedek. want to, yeah, Mechelzedek. When you want to achieve something, the entire universe will conspire to help you. Yes, yes. 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 That, but that, that, something along the lines. Yeah, no, that's exactly what he says. Right, it, it's, it's crazy and it's so true. And when you, that's actually a power that you can harness. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm afraid of meditation, because I know that the power of the mind and the power of thought. Keep going, keep going. I you just keep going. I, I know that it's true, and I know that it can be worked on. So that's why I'm like, when I'm when I'm if I go into meditation, and I've tried to meditate, and I think I've accomplished it, but I'm afraid that I'll become even more in tune with that part of my brain where you can manifest things. So Sadhguru, do you know him? No. Do you know Sadhguru? Sad, sad guru is sad guru it's like uh he's like a, a famous guru you know okay and he was talking about the power of the mind right because I, I watched like all different types of dudes and he was saying like you said it is a power and it is something you can harness but he said the thing that's scary about it is once you unlock that power even the negative stuff yes. that you think about will come like that so you know what i mean so it's like yeah. Stay thirsty, and, my friends, like yes. for knowledge and ego attacking. When, like, I, when yes. I first started meditating, right, the 
it, it was weird because I would get some dark thoughts sometimes when mm-hmm. I first started meditating. I think it's like because you don't really process that stuff that's deep down inside until you yeah. sit there. Yeah, and you're like, listen and here, let it come up. Yeah, you know. And I, literally, I would think to myself, all right, well, I'm not, I'm not meditating anymore because I don't want to have those thoughts, those negative right. thoughts come up, right? But then the more I thought about it, I was like, I'm just gonna meditate through it. I'm just gonna keep doing this every single day. Mm-hmm. And right now is the first time I'm actually thinking about any of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Like all that stuff, like every anytime I meditate doesn't pop up anymore. It's like it's I've meditated through it. Like I just like yeah. kept going, you know. It's awesome. Before you so powerful. Jump back into that. What was the book that you said to read? Uh by S- Simon Sinook. So I would I would read two. Uh Start with Why. I think I might have that, Jake. I swear it's that's, crazy. It's a really good book. It'd be crazy if you actually. I actually do. I swear. I went after this. <laughs> we're gonna check. Okay. And then uh Blake Myoski, who owns Tom's Shoes. Yep. Uh, wrote a book called Start Something uh, Start Something That Matters. Okay. Start Something That Matters. And he talks about his journey with Tom. You know Tom Shoes, Buy One, Give One. Yep. Mm-hmm. He talks about, about starting a brand and starting and it's it's really Yeah, Start Something That Matters. Yeah, start something that matters yeah. All right. Really good books. Where 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 were we? I don't know where we were talking about. You were gonna go, jump into the Dan Orlovsky story, yeah. but then you were saying talk about the power of the mind yeah first. the power of the mind the power of intention oh yeah you know what? let's do that and then go into dan because that kind of ties into it, oh, it definitely right does. all right so yeah do that it definitely does i um, love that so i i personally have just i i, I moved uh, i left this part out of my story i actually i was so depressed that i ran away and i ran away and i moved to australia i went to the other side of the earth sorry and um i went i went to school in sydney i went for marketing but i just went because i just wanted to not be around my problems here like um, I had a roommate. His name is Roman. One of the most impactful people. In my Ronin life. or Roman? Roman. Oh, cool. Roman. Real good dude from Russia. Um, it was funny. Like I'd always make fun of like how we beat him in the Miracle on Ice. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's funny, yeah. But um, they probably take that to heart too. Like, oh just, yeah. yeah, you know, like, like, we, like, ended, we ended the Cold War that way that day. But just so you know. <laughs> oh, you, you mean so that Rocky didn't in Rocky Four? <laughs> I should have brought Rocky. Yeah, do that. <laughs> it's so funny. He's like, if I could change, you could change. It's so funny, dude. <laughs> so, um, Roman introduced me to the secret. Um, yep. Um, watched that a few times. Like when I say a few times, like he made me watch it every night, and uh, just changed my mind. Like, okay, I have control over my thoughts, and I have control over you know what I'm manifesting, and it was true. I mean, it was accurate. It was accurate, and um, I just kind of harnessed those. So. That's the power of the mind. Um, definitely uh, everything that I've really thought of and I've really wanted um, that was in line with goodness. That's important to, to understand too. It has to be aligned with your, pur- if it's aligned with your purpose and it's aligned with doing good and righteousness in his name, um, I think it's even more powerful. I think it just actually manifests even quicker and faster, uh, faster, quicker, better. And sometimes it doesn't manifest, but something replaces it, which you have to be cognizant of as well. Not everything is meant for you. Just yeah. because you're thinking of it, it's not always meant for you. Yes, and um, that we have preach. To, yeah, we have to we have to understand that too. You, know, you may want that one building. You're like, man, that building was it. No, man, God didn't want you to have that. That yeah. building was wrong for you. Just didn't know it. Yeah. And yeah. You have to trust that, man. Everything will work out exactly yeah. how it's supposed to. Be. Yeah, it's our, <laughs> not how I want it to be, but exactly yeah. how it's supposed to be. Um. Mach exactly. two, Mach two, man. It was written. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. an alchemy. Right. Yeah. It was written. Yeah. I like see. I I know how that feels because with hoops, Jake knows. Like, you talk to Mike in eighth grade, going into freshman year in high school. I'm going to the NBA. There's there's nothing (laughs) else. Like, there's nothing else. So obviously, I'm not there. But there was a time where I had to come to grip with that and like accept that. You know, it was a moment where I'm like, "Dang, I'm actually trash, and this (laughs) isn't meant for me." Or you know, or just hold on though. Maybe you are supposed to be in the NBA. Maybe you're not there yet. No, 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 no. no, no, no. But hear me out. You're thinking of it as a player. Yeah, maybe as an owner or something. Yeah. Maybe as something. Yeah. Videographer. Maybe something. No, no. I've all honestly. I told myself to be honest. I asked Solomon. Shout out Solomon. This is probably like 2010. I told him if I never make it, I want to own a team. And now with the UB Knights, shout out UB, being no more in 10 years, when. We we're a little bit farther along, dude. Imagine the Bridgeport Knights, right there, 
destroy <laughs> those two trash arenas, make one mega one. Yeah. Oh my god. It's over. All right. So Dan Olofsky. All right. So this is probably one of the craziest stories because it's just crazy. Jake knows the story a little bit. I think you know the whole story. I know, yeah, you told me the whole story. I was blown right. away. So um COVID hit live free and uh, you know, it hit a lot of nonprofits really hard. And um, we were trying to do things to stay relevant. And um, the name Dan Orlowski kept coming up. This was like March, April. And uh, Dan Orlowski, for those that don't know, is uh, he, he was born and raised in Shelton. Um, went to Shelton High. That's where crazy. That's where Live Free is actually from. I live in Shelton, and Live Free is. is based I had in no Shelton. idea who he was before you told me this story. So Dan Orlowski was uh, went to UConn, quarterback, uh, drafted. I believe he was drafted by the Lions. Um, I don't know much, but I know he's, you know, yeah, he's, 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 he was, he's successful. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, uh, Dan Orlowski went, um, went on to the pros, um, played for a few teams, ended up starting for the Lions for a few games. Um, he, he retired from the NFL recently and he moved back to Connecticut and he works at ESPN as an on air analyst for the NFL. He works with Keyshawn Johnson. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, the, you know, I'm familiar with the name. I, we actually graduated the same year. I went to Central High School in Bridgeport. He was at Shelton High. And, um, you know, I knew who he was. Obviously, if, you know, around that time, you knew who he was. He was a superstar, you know, high school ball player. Mm. So um, people knew he was going. Places. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was, it was known he was going places for sure. He was like high school NFL or high school football player of the week, like every week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the name just keeps coming up. And I'm from Shelton. So you'd, you'd think that that was kind of you know normal i guess but uh it it was abnormally coming up it was abnormally coming up and i and i paid attention to it so i was like you know what i'm going to reach out to dan arlowski via his instagram and i'm going to say hey let me send you guys some live free hoodies if you can put them on and just give us a shout out on your social media like that'd be incredible he has like a hundred thousand followers on excuse me on instagram and like a hundred and eighty thousand followers something like that on twitter i'm like if this guy can give us a shout out that That'd be huge during uh, COVID. Um, we had Mandy Moore give us a shout out. We had um, I love Mandy. Mandy Moore, so she's so awesome. <laughs> she's just, she looks, just looks like a wholesome person. Like, yeah, I, she may be a terrible person. I don't. She know. Could be. Yeah. I don't think. Don't I, know. I think it's impossible. No, I think me it's too. Impossible. Yeah, I bet the farm on that that she's a good person. But yeah, she gave us a shout out on um, you know on social media, and then there's a Disney show that gave us a shout out on on um, gave my daughter personally a shout out for her. Oh, mission. cool. Yeah, so it was really cool. We we're we we're kind of riding that wave and. Um, I was like, you know, I'm going to just reach out to him. If he can give us a shout out, that'll just grow us even more through, uh, you know, a um, uh, sports, you know, and we don't have that. And we send a lot of kids to sporting events, right? So it'd be mm. cool to have that, right? So uh, reach out to him and he insta, respond, inter, insta replies. He's like, yeah, cool. Send me a thing. I'd, I'd, I'd definitely throw it on. So I was getting a package ready and um, I don't know. Something just came over me. It was like, send him a letter and ask him to be a spokesperson. I was like, it's kind of aggressive, but uh, it is what it is. What, what's the word you're going to say? No. Like, I'm already sitting on a no now. That's important for people to know. Closed mouths don't get you fed. You are already sitting on a no. Yeah. You might as well ask. Yeah. Right? So. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I wrote him a nice letter and I was like, look, you're a, you know, from Shelton. I gave him all the parallels. This is what we do. We'd love for you to be like a spokesperson. I don't need much from you. Once or twice a month, just give us a shout out. Tell people what's going on with our our crew. You know, hopefully some some sports people will see us and it'll just catch on. You know, um, my my hope is that we can establish relationships with like professional sports leagues. Yeah. So we can get tickets pretty easily. quickly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the goal for Live Free. Um, I think that's the goal at least. That's the goal for now. Right. Um. So I sent him a letter. Uh, really nice letter. It's like I should frame this one too. <laughs> and um, I don't really write well. <laughs> so, so when you when get you, when you, you get it right, you put right. a banger together. Like, this, this one's, I go to the, saving this. I went, I went to the Zoolander school for like <laughs> people like kids that can't read well. Yeah. <laughs> Is this a place for ants? <laughs> oh my god, what a classic line! Yeah, so, <laughs> so, um, so I wrote a really nice letter, and I didn't get any response. I was like crushed. And again, but the name still keeps coming up. Dan Orlowski, Dan Orlowski, Dan Orlowski. What's yeah. going on with Dan Orlowski? And I'm like, man, why is this coming up? Right. So this was in mid-May. We wrote him, we wrote him that letter. And it's like 
it was weird. We sent them hoodies right, in May because it had snowed. I don't know if you remember. It was like May 13th and it snowed. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, here, it might be cold. <laughs> <laughs> and then like the next week, it's like 80 degrees. I'm like, I really missed on this. <laughs> you know, I, this guy, like, I got to wait till the fall now. <laughs> <laughs> For a so, shout out. Yeah. <laughs> so I, um, I waited a little while and I didn't hear anything back. And you know, I'm following on Instagram. I'm seeing he's going on like on vacations. It'd be really cool if he had a little free hoodie on right now, you know. So <laughs> I, sent, I actually sent him and, and his whole family. I, he, had, you know, it's on Instagram. He has kids, so I sent his kids hoodies. I sent him and his wife hoodies, and I didn't hear anything back. I hope he hears this because it's really important for, him, for yeah. I want him to hear it. Yeah, it's crazy. We're gonna, so, we're gonna, we'll tag him. We're gonna tag Daryl. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, you have to listen to this time. Yeah. So um, it's crazy, man. The name just keeps coming up. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. So. I kind of looked at it like something was pushing me towards him. So I, I, um, I wrote him an, uh, another message on Instagram and I was like, Hey, just want to make sure you got your package. This is like a month and a half later. And he responds like a couple of days later. He's like, Hey, I just got the package. Awesome stuff. You know, got your, got your letter. Um, appreciate the offer. I just need some time to think about it. I'm like, well, that's not the answer I was looking for, Dan. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I'll sit on this for a little while. No big deal. But um, now I have in my mind, like, he's, He's thinking about it. He's thinking about it, but I'm like, I really, we really need this at this point, right? Yeah. COVID really hit nonprofits hard, especially I what bet. we do. We can't send kids to events, right? <laughs> like, yeah, the, the whole yeah. Thing. <laughs> we're doing, and we did, we did a lot. We did a lot during COVID. We we did streaming services. We we helped 110 families. Oh, it's um, cool because you like get famous people like in front of a kid, you know, on Zoom or whatever it, well, type we, stuff. Yeah, we, I mean, we didn't do that. We were trying to do that. Yeah. It just didn't happen. But we were doing streaming services where we, you know, give the kids Disney. And oh, Netflix cool. And oh, stuff. sick. Like right. the so, actual. So while they were home during stuff, they had stuff to do, you know, Xbox Live. Nice. Stuff, right? I could appreciate the live subscription. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I was like, man, I, I just had I this guy really needed to do this for us. And then, you know, so um, two weeks had passed and I'm like, no response. I'm like, now I'm starting to get devastated. I'm like, I'm like kind of sick to my stomach. Like, man, I really want to, now I don't want to bother him. Now I'm in a spot. Where do I do? Do I bother this man? I mean, he's working for ESPN. They don't even know if football's going to happen. He's probably not sure if he's going to have a job analyzing the NFL college football's done. You know, we just found out college football is done. Yep. And, um, I was like, I don't know what to do. Do I press this guy? Like, do I write, you know, what do I do here? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So I talked to my wife because she usually tells me what to do anyways. <laughs> and she's like, Dan, wait 21 days. And I thought that was really weird. She's like, three weeks, 21 days. And I was like, that's kind of weird that you said three weeks. But I'll go with it. No big deal. So I um, like, thanks for the help because you really didn't tell me what to say or how to do it. But I'll just wait the three weeks. And maybe <laughs> just don't like do anything for three weeks. Right. Don't do anything for the, you know, you got another yeah. week. I'm like, okay. So I waited a week and then the 21st day came, 21 days. Actually, 20th day came and I was supposed to meet with my guru. My uh, spiritual advisor, George. And uh, George calls me up on the 20th day. He's like, Dan, I had a death in the family. I can't meet today. Let's meet tomorrow. 21st. 21st day. I'm like, okay, that works. <laughs> you know, I'm following the signs. The omens are there. I'm following them. So um, 21st day comes and we go to a cafe. I put on a long sleeve shirt in the middle of June. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was July at this point. I put on a long sleeve shirt in the middle of, middle of July. I don't do well in the heat. Mm. I'm like, Spitzing. I'm like, I'm like butter. I'm like butter next to like hot soap, <laughs> right? And yep. Just get a little soft. And um, so we sit inside this cafe, and uh, because they have air conditioning. And I'm talking to George. I'm like, George, all right, this is what I need. I actually have it right here. So we start writing notes, and George is like, here it is here. So me and George are talking, and he, I'm like, George, I need you to help me write a note. Because I don't know what to say. Do I invite this man out for coffee? Do I invite him out for golf? Like, I'd love to play golf with Dan Orlowski. I'm not really good, but I'll pick up some tips. And But is four hours too long to spend with a stranger? Some fan that reached out to him on Instagram. Like, it's kind of <laughs> weird, right? Yeah. I'd imagine it'd be weird to him. So um, what do I do? Do I reach out to coffee? Do we do breakfast, lunch, dinner? Like, what do I do, man? What do I do here? And what are the words that I use? What am I, you know, I kind of know what I want to say. And so we're going through it. And, and George tells me, it's right here. It's right here. He yeah. wrote notes, right? And uh, he, he told me he was like, use the word ambassador instead of like you know, oh, spokesperson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like, that's an important word. And we're going through these notes, right? And um, all right, so I put the book away. I slide over. I put the book away. And as I'm putting the book away, I'm like, George, I just need you to write this. I don't need cliff notes, man. I, I keep hitting this thing. 
Um, I don't need cliff notes. I know the cliff notes. That's easy. Yeah, that's the free store easy. Um, I need I need you to write this for me. Right. So I pull out the notebook and he's like, Dan, you're really adamant about this. What's going on? I was like, I don't know, George. I just feel like God's telling me that this man, you know, should be part of that. I need to reach out to this guy and he's gonna help us. I was like, and I just I feel so confident that if I get him in the chair, I pointed to I pointed to the chair that was sitting that was next to us. I was like, I feel so confident that if he sat in the chair, he would he would sit down. You know, he'd sit down and commit. He's like, really? I was like, yeah. I was like, it's so confident that I feel like he's going to walk through the door. And I, I flipped to the page, and nine, within 90 seconds, Dan Orlowski walks through the door of this cafe, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just walks in. Dan Orlowski walks in, right? So now I'm sweating because I got this long sleeve shirt, and it's like, here he is. I got it rolled up. Oh, right? no. I got this rolled up. I'm sweating. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe it. And I'm not even – I'm not even an NFL guy. I don't really follow the football like that. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not a fanboy when it comes to that kind of stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm, it's just, I'm, yeah, more basketball too. But yeah. It, I mean, if Robert Ory walked through the door, like, you'd know who he is. Yeah. yeah and, and you'd be and, excited. And, and I would just, I'd risk it all. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> We'd take a photo and I'd probably get the cops called on me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so um, I'm sweating and George is like, all right, give me a minute. So George goes up to Dan and he's like, Hey, I want to buy you breakfast, Mr. Orlowski. And he looks at it's like, who's this guy? And George's like, well, you don't know me, but you know, my friend and out here, I'm sitting here. I cleared the table because I knew he was sitting down. I cleared, I cleared the table next to us because you know, we were eating and I put the stuff on. I cleared it because I knew he was going to sit there. And um, I'm like, Hey, you don't know me, but you know, uh, oh, no, George's like, you don't know me, but you know, my friend here. And he, and Dan looks at me, he's like, I don't know you, but I recognize that shirt. Cause I had my live free shirt and I wasn't a hoodie. Thank God. Cause I had been dying dying um he's like give me a minute i'm gonna sit down with you so i sit down and he sat down in the very chair that i pointed at and was like he's gonna sit in this chair and commit he's like i want to help you and i was like wow that's crazy so i i briefly told him what how he doesn't know the whole story and i kind of want to tell him i was thinking about emailing maybe i'll just send him this link yeah just send him this yeah that'd be crazy and um so he, he was like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to help you guys. And, um, he gave me his email. We exchanged a few emails and, you know, we connected it. It didn't, if I'm being honest, it wasn't in the way that I had imagined mm-hmm. that, it, that he would help. Um, you know, he has his own foundation, which I probably should have done some more research on that. Um, but he has his own foundation. So he was kind of like, you know, I don't want to mix the messages up. Like I, if my, my foundation is dormant right now, right. I'm not really doing much with my my foundation but i just think it'd be a not a great look if and these are my words not his mm-hmm. that it wouldn't be a good look to mix the messages and i totally get it right from a non-profit standpoint i totally get it right um but he has helped i mean he gave us a shout out on social media like he said he would mm. put his kids in, in in the hoodies and give us a shout out so about five or six hundred dollars worth of hoodies uh got us a whole bunch of new followers on instagram which, nice. was, which was great but now it's like i don't know that that after talking about talking to him about you know um being a spokesperson and he was like, you know, I don't know because I'm thinking about starting this up. I don't think God was putting him for me, man. I think God was putting me for him to kind of edge, like give him the little nudge that he needs Mm -hmm. to get back to get back into his nonprofit is what Mm -hmm. I really think is Mm -hmm. happening here because could, it could be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, there's a reason. There's a reason it was a legit miracle, man. Think about the odds. No, like yeah, man. no, I, I get it. I, that shit is crazy. It's I love that stuff. Crazy. I love it. I live for that. Can you can you imagine saying, you know what? Maybe I could, you, I could be at I could be at Harborview, right? And Jake's are often. Yeah, yeah. And for yeah. me to tell Anthony, yeah, hey, you know what? I feel like Jake's gonna walk in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if Jake walked in ninety seconds later, it would still be crazy. Anthony yeah. would think I was a witch. Yeah. <laughs> no, and Jake, if no one knows, Jake goes there very often. Shout out Harborview Deli. It's a great you spot. Could, you could probably post up at the same time every day, and I'm gonna get there within like <laughs> ten minutes of that time. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. But but to, but to call it out, no, for, yeah. As far as like. Dude, yeah, it could be like maybe maybe you're an omen for for him. Damn, yeah, and I and I think I need to. That's why I said like I kind of want to reach out to him and tell so, him the story. Yeah, he, he's a man of faith. That's what, dude. That's you got to just send him this. I'll send you. I'll clip out just this little clip for you to just give to him to be like, yo, I know you don't know about that day, but here's about that. Yeah, day. Yeah, I think it's important for I him to know he'd, that. Yeah, he'd probably be in shock. Yeah, he's a man yeah. of faith and, and he's a believer. I he mean, is. we talked we talked briefly about. It. I was like, dude, we were just talking about you, like. It's crazy that you're here. I didn't want to get into a whole thing. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, yeah, you, yeah, you were like, you were like, I was just writing this. this yeah, yeah. Right, letter to you. Right, right. It's exactly what I was like, dude. I was, here's the notes. I was just, and he was like, it's actually no coincidence 
either that you reached out to me. He's like, I believe in this stuff. You know, I had a friend whose child was just diagnosed with DIPG, which is an aggressive brain cancer. He's like, so I definitely believe in that kind of stuff. Mm. You know, there's no coincidence that I'm here either. So maybe he's supposed to go help that family. I don't know. I don't, I don't I, know. I'm not the architect. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, maybe it's a bigger thing for both of you. Yes. Right. Altogether. Yeah. Like, right. Who knows? Yeah. The power of the dance. Yeah. The Same name. Yeah. 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 Wow. Nah. Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> he said, nah. <laughs> I'm not crazy, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. That's so funny. The heck yeah. It reminds me of like, Finkel is Einhorn. <laughs> 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 I don't, uh, nah, definitely not a, <laughs> definitely not a stalker, Dan, but it's just interesting that, that his name was brought up so much. Mm-hmm. And um, he walked in, I said ni- 90 seconds. Man. And when, when I say 90 seconds, it probably wasn't even 90 seconds. Mm. I, I, was, I, felt, I feel like he's going to walk through the door. He was parking his car. Yeah, seriously, Literally. seriously, he was parking his car. Like while we were talking, while, yeah. I, while I was saying, while I said, I feel like he's gonna walk through. The door. He probably walked through his car door, literally, and uh, it was just crazy. So I met with George about it, and it's like that was just affirmation. It's power of the mind. It's um, you know being in line with purpose, all that good stuff. So yeah, yeah. yeah Oscar story, crazy. One other uh, thing that we talked about the other day, you were saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, you were, you were, you were briefly sidetracked by what you thought might have been another, like spinoff of Live Free. Remember, you were telling me about uh, your your other plan. Oh, and like how how you were kind of deviated, almost deviated from your real purpose, and then yeah, came back to it. Yeah. it. It's an important story. I don't really know how to frame it though. I don't know how to frame it. So um, we had thrown a fundraiser and um, in Fairfield and we spent, I teamed up with Al, my mentor and um, it was a bust. The weather just didn't cooperate. And I had this idea of opening up a fundraising facility, like a building that you can fundraise in. Right. And I worked really hard at it for a year and throughout that whole year, like magical things were happening i was meeting people i was telling i don't want to get into too much detail about it but i was meeting people that like you just don't normally walk into i'm talking about ceo major major companies um it was just an incredible i i thought i was really on to something i thought i had it figured out and um at the time live free was again my daughter was still in treatment my daughter was still in treatment this was in 2018 so my daughter was still in she, she was just about wrapping up treatment yeah, she was just about wrapping up treatment. And uh, I was going to like these conventions and I was going to, you know, writing these business plans and meeting people. And it was incredible. It was just like so easy. When I tell you it was easy, man, like just things were just happening. I was like, this is incredible. This is my path because it's so easy. Right. Um, met with, I actually met with George because now I needed funding and I needed understanding. And, you know, there's just a lot to that. I don't know. This is tough to get into without giving too much detail. <laughs> um, right. Well, ba- basically, I wanted to open up this facility. I was working on it. And while I was working on it, I thought I was really doing something good. And, and the purpose for it was that I was actually going to fund to live free through it as well. Mm. So it was going to fund other local nonprofits. Like I was, I had this vision of like no little league kid paying for little league uh, football, no kids playing, paying for, like we would take care of all of that from the local surrounding cities, right? With this, with this idea, it was going to be run as a nonprofit as well. And, um, you know, I was going to fund live free, live free at the time was only operating on like a 20 to $30,000 annual income, right. right? That's how much we were raising every year. So it wasn't like a huge amount. Um, and I was content with live free just being what it was very local, helping one hospital. What George had taught me and, and, and another person, um, one of my current board members was that, that was a distraction from my real purpose. Now, in 2018, when I was really focused on this, Live Free had only raised eighteen thousand dollars, like eighteen or nineteen thousand dollars. It was good enough for our budget, but we weren't really pushing to help kids. It, we didn't. I think that year was actually we only helped like twenty kids. It wasn't even like a lot. And um, I was, you know, behind the scenes working on building this other, this other, you know, nonprofit. And uh, I was asked a very simple question. If you open up this facility, this fundraising facility, what happens to live free? And I like to think – I'm not afraid of ha- like thinking uh, – what's the word I'm looking for? Like thinking hard about myself. Uh, 
critically thinking about, you know, mm-hmm. you know, I like to be brutally honest about myself. Um, I answered him. I said, live free would go under because this facility would be so big and would need so much energy and TLC. Focus. Yeah. That I would eventually, it, it sound really good to fund live free, but then who's going to send the kids? Who's going to buy the tickets? Who's going to talk to the families? Who's going to, you know, who's going to do all that? It all needs your personal it, touch. Yeah. It's, it's a personal touch where we're at now. Yeah. Um, so uh, I was like, wow, that's crazy. And then George was like, that's the devil. He's clever. He put this in front of you to distract you from your real purpose of helping these kids with cancer. Don't forget that your daughter had cancer. You know, yeah. that happened for a reason. Don't forget where you came from. Don't forget mm. where you came from. Bingo. Right. <laughs> so, um, so I instantly was like, you know what, George, you're right. I'm going to put this on the back burner. I'm going to put this facility on the back burner. I'm not canceling it, but I'm putting it, I put it real on the way far back burner. Um, the business plan is built. The connections are made. Like if I need a couple million dollars to open this, hopefully it'll come. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll address it at some point, but it's on the way back burner. Right. And um, this was in May. This is, it, it was crazy how it happened. It was in May. I went, I met George. I went to Arizona for my, you know, my spiritual calling. This is when the Adam Sandler thing happened. And it was just, this total affirmation in this month of May. It was just unbelievable. I put it to the back burner. I told all of my current board members that were on Live Free, I says, and it was mom. When I tell you mom and pop, it was literally mom and pop. My dad was on the board. I had, you know, family <laughs> was on the board. Like it was mom and pop. Yeah. You know, people that it's great to govern, you know, and have guidance, but it wasn't like they're not helping us get to the next level. Right. Cause they, they, they personally just hadn't been there, yeah. which is fine. Like, and, and that's not just needed on the people to help you. Right. So, step it up. so as soon as I put, the other idea, the live fun idea on the back burner. Um, I really focus on live free and I, I got, I told everyone they needed to resign um, and that we were, I was going to reform the board and I did. And I reformed the board with some incredible people I got. Um, and this is public knowledge. So Scott Blumenfeld, he's a the CFO. Um, he's a CFO of a major hedge fund here in Connecticut. Um, so he's helping us build, you know, He's helping us not only with the finances, but also, you know, business strategy. Um, I have uh, a woman named Mary Beth McGuire. She's um, she's the executive director of corporate responsibility for our pharmaceutical company. So she writes grants and fulfills grants so she can help us on that front. And then um, I, I got um, an oncologist. My daughter's oncologist joined the board, too. So we're now we're pretty, pretty legit board. And, um, you know, the focus was shifted. So I, t- I told you in 2018, we raised around eighteen to nineteen thousand dollars. Uh, total when I shifted just from May, just from May until December of twenty uh, of twenty nineteen, we raised one hundred and twenty thousand. So we did five x in six months just from sh- just from changing the the focus. To sh- you know we shifted mm-hmm. and we're, we we had like eighty I think it was like eighty six families in that one in that six months essentially it was it was and really it was crazy. like twenty in a year yeah before we doing, that yeah, which is crazy like twenty thirty in a year and it, yeah and you had some you had some big plans for this year like the the ga- the gala that. Yep. It's postponed, right? That was going to probably be a huge event this year. Right. The golf event was awesome. We did the golf event. We have a um, baseball tournament coming up, which we're holding here in Bridgeport. That's a cool one. Um, it's good. We, we're getting kids involved that play baseball. So it's like they get to use their outlet to uh, to do good. You know? Cool. So, which is really cool. And then we're doing a miniature golf tournament and, uh, in October. We're trying to we're trying to catch up, but it's, it's interesting. Uh, even though it's been really hard for nonprofits, we're actually on par f- – actually ahead of what we did last year. Oh, good. In terms wow. of fundraising. Yeah. Nice. That's yeah. So I can lesson. Yeah, man. Honestly. Yeah, so, so it's, um, you know, the, the lesson there was, was very interesting is that, um, that you can easily be thrown off your path. Um, and the devil's clever, man, because he'll use things and make it easy. And he'll use things that you think are doing the right it's really thing. Just diverting you from your actual, your, yeah. your actual purpose. Yeah. Yep. It's He's a tricky. He's a tricky mole. <laughs> you know, it is. Yeah. It's cra- it's crazy because I would have went with it, dude. I had I had a guy come up and was like, "Yeah, um, my family owns 170 acres, and uh, we're looking to donate it." And I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> you yeah." Know, like, where does that happen? Yeah, right. like, you, when does that just pop up? Let me tell you though. As soon as I put that on the back burner, I never heard from that man again. Mm. Never heard from him again. And I'm not saying he was he wasn't devil, reaching but, out to you, begging you to right, right. begging you to take please his take land. my land. <laughs> right. yeah. We actually have oil ready for you there. <laughs> right. So it's um, you know it's just it's just interesting how this all works, man. And I don't have it figured out. If it ever come across like I have it figured out, I don't. Mm. 
I don't. And equally, don't trust I, anybody that does tell you. Yeah. Have it equally, out. equally, I know that you don't have it figured out. <laughs> Hell, no. you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you see me over here, <laughs> and that's not a hit on anyone, man. That's just that's just reality. It's real. It's like reality. We were, yeah, we were saying you should always be seeking. Right. Like, right. I mean, I just, yeah. It's actually, I saw on one of those motivational um, Instagram pages yesterday. Um, constantly be educating yourself. Yes. And improving yourself in any aspect, which is like either physically, mentally, or emotionally, or spiritually, constantly be improving yourself each and every day. Yeah. The minute and, you tell yourself, All right, I got this, yeah. you don't have it. Yeah, you messed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're back at square yeah. one. That's it. <laughs> yep. Um, I um you know, it's just it's just so interesting how this all works together. Mm, yeah. So it's just all connected and it, it is it is crazy. Even like you were talking about the the amphitheater over here mm -hmm. right what were, what were you just saying about that before so the own uh just that the owner um the guy that's in charge of building that he owns the sports center in shelton mm. right so we're we're doing an event at that amphitheater right oh that's what that is. the amphitheater is the, the bridgeport the new outdoor, the new outdoor arena, arena. Yeah. oh cool yeah so the, the guy that owns this building yeah set up an event he there, yeah like yep. like an art show that we're actually we're gonna be like doing that's not gonna happen because 24th 5th yeah no. this month yeah 24th, no there's no way i swear 20... it's under construction over there i this is what i got right here or this is i'm telling you when did you write the one down? next to the harbor harbor yeah arena i think so right uh, you tell I me i don't know i don't know i gotta get, i gotta confirm with sharon now <laughs> <laughs> well it might might be over there i don't know it's it's you know what? I'll tell you what it is right now. Hold on. You you guys keep talking, but it is Steel Point. Yeah. Yeah. Mer yeah. Right. The Steel Point Marina or something. Oh no oh, no 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 no. So completely different. That's where Boca is. That's on the other side of the water. Oh, okay. that's like that big. Like you could see it off of I ninety five. Like that's where that's right. where yeah. that's where the yachts are. And yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. They stopped they stopped construction over there at the at the amphitheater because of COVID. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. So that's where I had the. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. So it's over there, though. Is it close to there? Yeah. yeah. It's walkable. A little bit, yeah. Okay. It's walkable. So Maybe you have... Uh, where can we find him? Yeah. Let us know where we could where we could find you on social media. Um, oh, our handle is at livefreetoday, L-I-V free today. That's our handle. And then our website's livefreetoday.org. Perfect. Perfect. You, could, you can go on there. You could sign up to be um, a corporate sponsor. You could sign up to be an individual sponsor. You could sign up to be... A reoccurring sponsor, which reoccurring. is great. Could you, uh, five bucks a month man that, that'd yeah. be huge for us you, you could know? donate um they also like you're saying a lot of great fun events that you could sign up for it all goes to a good cause right we try to do our fundraising the same way we we treat our families we want it to be family fun and you know just have a really good time yeah you and how'd you like the golf tournament the golf tournament was awesome like i tell them what you're in charge of man come on so, i thought that's cool i was so I, I sponsored the the longest drive so funny right can i tell them real quick before so, no, let me okay, tell the okay, story. Okay, and then okay, I'll okay, okay, okay. All right. So I sponsored the long, <laughs> the longest drive thing, right? Which, by the way, so like you put my name on a sign, right, on the thing. It said, Jake Healy, total mortgage, longest, longest drive, longest drive, <laughs> longest drive, <laughs> right? So there's a sign there. I took a picture of it, right? Wow. Uh -huh. I, I post it up on my Instagram. Literally, like, 15 people hit me up. Congratulations. Longest drive. How far did you hit it? Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> That's what so I thought. Now I have all these people. Like, he hit me up. Like, yo, I didn't know you were so good at golfing. <laughs> yeah, I told him. I was like, the I last time I you golfed was so long ago. I can't golf for shit. So now I have all these people <laughs> hitting me up. Like, let's let's go play soon. Like, I want to I wanna go play. I want to oh, play. that's too funny. Right? So, um, but no, yeah, we did the, the longest drive event. And uh, I was basically selling marshmallows to people. To get them to see how far they could hit a marshmallow. Oh, cool. So we, we were giving the driver away to the, to the longest one. But it was fun because Fabrizio was there and he knows literally every Everyone. single person that stopped there like like they were his cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was coming up, hugging him. I think like, he is everyone's cousin. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. That's <laughs> like how you feel with him, yeah. <laughs> no, that was cool. That was really, um, that's, a fun, that's a fun one because so I don't, you don't golf at all? I have he used to. Time. Jake used to take lessons. So when you pull up, when you pull up to was. a par three, because that's where you were at. When you pull up to a par three, talking about it's the longest drive competition, people are like, <laughs> "What are you talking about?" And then you get up and you put a marshmallow on the tee. Yeah, and they get competitive. The hardest yeah. part is getting the marshmallow the to stay on the tee. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. But that's a cool. It, it's a fun event. It's one of my favorites to throw. Um, 
We had a good time. Yeah. <laughs> we had a good time. It was really good. And we raised a lot of money too. I mean, we did like 32,000. Yeah. So it's awesome. a pretty successful event for us. Mm. What else? You got to ask me. I got to, we got time, man. What else do you want to talk about? What else? Let's get deep. What do you want to get deep about? I love deep, man. <laughs> I I mean, I, I I don't know, Jake. What do you, I have, I, I just like to go with the flow. You know what I mean? So whatever comes up, comes up. Whatever doesn't, doesn't. And this this is the conversation, you yeah. know? Got it. Um, I just think it's really cool, though, what you got going on. And I love that you're helping people, you know, because especially, like, obviously 2020 has been so fucked up, but it, every year is fucked up, right. you know? It's just what's the mass media putting their Focus scopes on? on. Yeah, exactly. Um and I actually wrote, uh, I mean, I, I saw a thing the other day that said, um, hey, if anyone meets me, blah, blah, blah just know I'm going to give you unconditional love, even if I don't know you. And then it was like, I know it may be weird, but people today seem to hate for no reason. So I could love for no reason, right. you know? Yeah. So I thought that was special. And that kind of makes me think of you, to be right. honest, after Thanks, meeting you. Yeah. So uh, not to get into politics, because I, I could care less about it, but. Uh, you know, one of the truest things that the current president says that the media is the enemy of the American people, and they just they show so much darkness. And I'm going to tell day, you, that's it. all day. That's it. Long. If you if you wake up right, like there's people that do, like they wake yeah. up, they turn the news yes. on, and then just consume that all they, day long, paralyzed with fear. But the, but the real news, the world becomes a dark place. Yes, but the, yeah. what the real news is, and I, and I can attest to this, there's so much more good out there than there is these small good news. Know, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. There's so much good news and people doing good things and there's so much goodness out there, man. And unfortunately it doesn't sell. Right. So these people are just making money off of misery and which is so sad because there's so much good out there. Right. Yeah. We, I should, just, say, we yeah. should just open up a, a network. that's like good news. Well, do you know what I was just going to say? Shout out good news movement on Instagram. Ah. I stopped following all these like like I, it's not even I wasn't following bad accounts. I should say there were just accounts posting way too much right. dark dark stuff from from everything like from from the the you know all the important things like the Black Lives Matter movement and stuff like that. Like they were posting the negatives. I was seeing negative stuff from those things, and I'm like, I just want to see good news going on in the, this dark world right now. So the good news movement, you guys do such a good job at that. It, it's constant all day good news like i'm gonna follow them yeah they're I awesome they're, it's just it's a good idea for a show though it's just like a good news movement good news talk show yeah right That's i it. mean there's so much out there yeah i was doing yeah i was doing an i was doing an event it was like a, a really cool story and uh i called a um a news crew i was like hey do you guys want to cover this and they're like yeah we'll do it we'll be there tomorrow and then it was like oh there was a shooting can't make it it's like you'd rather cover a shooting and talk about like spreading mm. more darkness than you would about yeah the shoot shooting cells i mean that's it's crazy it's, it's, it's all clickbait, clickbait. Yeah. yeah it's so sad i know i always tell people like you know get up go out and be a part of your community right. and like the world isn't that bad of a place you know what i mean it's like, not at all <laughs> it's i mean it's there's obviously like some people depending on where you live it can be a little bit better a little bit worse but for the most part like if you if you wake up you reach out to people that are in your so, community. It's a good place. To, it's a good it, place to live. It, it is not what it is on TV. And to add Real to this, to uh, our buddy Solomon, shout out Saul. He's uh, tuned in right now from work. Uh, awesome. <laughs> um, he said, "Good News Network good could, news. could call it the Good News Network." Yeah. Or are you saying Saul? GNN. Good News Network is a thing that exists. We'll wait for his response. I think Good News Network is a thing that it exists. has to be. Yeah. But no, I mean, like if you. I don't have cable at my house, right? Yeah. For you. I don't have like yeah, me so either. there's no just like mindless stuff right. on in the background. Like you're selecting there. what to put in. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. If if there's bad news that I need to hear about, somebody's gonna tell me. Yeah. Right. Amen. It'll get to the you. news on every day and be like, oh, what's going on in, in the world right now? Like if there's something it doesn't, like, it doesn't really affect right? you. Like I want to be educated and I want to know like yeah. what's going on in the world, right? right? So like I'll, I'll look stuff up or whatever. But if there's something oh, like he said new name for that. It. That detrimental. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. That detrimental that I need to know about it, and it's that bad. Like somebody, like my mom, my dad, right. somebody who watches the news is gonna let me know <laughs> that I need to know about it. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. But what's? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, what's uh, what's the plan for for live free going forward? What's like the uh, the the bigger picture? 
bigger picture. Um, I want to I want to make sure that we're not saying no to any pediatric cancer patients. I want to help every single one enjoy so every single person that single contacts one. you or that you can reach out to gets gets that's, help. Gets that's the help. goal. Yeah. Um, I'd be there now. We just need to raise a little more funds to make sure that we're able to not say no. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think um, I think. I really want live free to be synonymous with just good. <laughs> if there's one word, just good, like yeah. um, joy. It, that's a better word. Yeah, joy's joy's that's the word. A good word. That's a good word. One of the happiness is another crazy thing that you were telling me about is like people have a hard time asking, like when you reach out to them mm -hmm. and you. You know, like, like, so let's say somebody refers a family and then you contact that family. You were saying a lot of times people have a hard time asking for right. they, what, whatever it is like that they, they want. Maybe like right. in their head, they're thinking it's too, too much it's or too much, right? they don't deserve it. Whatever um, it is. Maybe there's somebody else in a, wor in a worse position. Um, but I want people to, you know, our cancer families to know that just because we're giving to you doesn't mean we're taking away from anyone else. Like we're here to give to everybody. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that that's a big that's a big issue that we have. Um, you know, I'll contact probably like forty percent of the families that we come in contact with now don't end up receiving anything, mostly because they they feel a way about it. You know, they're like, you know, it's tough to take something, but I want them to know that they shouldn't be because it's important to to have that family time. And equally, why it's important is because there's people out there like you that support us that want to do this. And right. They shouldn't be taking that away from people that want to do good. Let's talk about that for a minute. One thing that I have learned out here is that people are so good. There are so many good people out there, right? Also, there's people out there that want to do good that don't know how, mm. right? Let's start giving people an outlet to do good, and we'll see a lot more good being done. Mm. That's That's one of the most profound things that I've experience with this too like I, I can't tell you how many people like i want to do this i want to do this i always wanted to do something but i just don't know how well let's give people the how you know yeah give, so, them, give them a chance to find their why <laughs> i love that i think that's a great place to end on honestly and yeah. we get into, i'm down for a part two we're at an hour 33 I know it goes by like that. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? I told you I could do this all day. I yeah. know. I, I know. <clears throat> Even Solomon was saying, always room for a round two. Yeah. And he's, no, I feel we want to have everybody back on. Oh, yes. Follow ups. Like, yes. Space, Multiple space times. Out, like a, Shout out to Solomon. Yeah, Solomon's the best. <laughs> I love Sol. He's, he's our friend that we grew up with. That's yeah. Like, he's listening now. Yeah. He's at his marketing job. <laughs> daydreaming about being here with us. Yeah. <laughs> literally yeah. yeah Solomon did you listen to the whole thing I'm pretty sure he listened to most of it we're gonna see his response in a sec I'd but... like I'd like to know what like what his favorite part was about yeah it. me too he's and he's he's gonna give it to us straight he will good. he will he's awesome like that good good um but Jay close this out and I'll put the music and then we'll keep yeah it. so again thank you for coming on do you have anything else like you wanted anything to add in anything no man just, that, that just you... keep pushing Sounds good. So again, if you want to find Danny at Live Free, it's uh it's it's livefreetoday.org online, right. or you could follow on Instagram at Live Free Today. Live Free Today. That's the, the Instagram handle. Um, go there, donate. It's it's a good local cause. Um, you could actually see the work that's that's being done, you know. So that's the best part for me about donating to it is like I, I know you, I know you're running it in an ethical way. So uh, again, thank you for coming on. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, bro. And we'll see you guys next time.